everybody. Welcome to Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews. I am Eric on the bar for today. It's a cast strength face-off from the island's Highland Parks cast strength edition number two, taking on the new cast strength edition number three. As always here on the channel, no states finish review. These whiskeys is coming your way. I'll tell you a bit about their value. Give you my final thoughts, final scores. Leave you with a malt musing. Tell you which one of these I think is the winner, whether or not you need to own it. Uh, before I do that, would appreciate uh, for you to take a second, smash that subscribe button. It'll make sure you don't miss any of these reviews, which drop every Friday. Here on YouTube, I also have a Tuesday happy hour, Tasty Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern time, nearly every Tuesday. Would love to see you there in the chat. Okay, Highland Park. An Islands Distillery, way up on the Isle of Orkney. Um, probably one of the more famous single malts. Um, but two years ago, I think late 2020, they released their first batch of their cast strength range. Since then, batch two and three have come out. Both of these are um, on the shelves right now. So we're going to talk about these as there are some differences uh, to note here. So first of all, let's start with Highland Park release cast strength number two. Um, the cast strength number two, which is this one here. This is bottled at, this is the tail of the tape. It is 63.9% ABV. It is a non age statement whiskey. It is non-chill filtered. We are not sure about color. I assume it is natural, but they don't say. Um, the casks on this are primarily sherry seasoned European oak and American oak and a small quantity of ex-bourbon cask. Okay. On the brand new just released here in September 2022, cast strength release number three, again, non-chill filtered, no age statement, but uh, this one is bottled at 64.1%, so 0.2% more. And the casks are interesting. Matured predominantly in first fill sherry, seasoned American and European oak casks, and a small quantity of refill casks, likely bourbon. So what it looks like to me here is we have seasoned American oak and stuff on here. And this one says first fill. Now, uh, this one says ex-bourbon. This one says refill. Is it is it possible that this one is all... Um, First fill and the second one is not tough to say because of the wording, but we'll go by what they say here. So if that's what it says, um, taking a look here at the bottles, again, it is the typical Highland Park embossed um, kind of Viking lore stuff, which is really what they've been known for, much to the chagrin of many of us. Uh, when they did this huge label change, let me just double check the bottles here. Okay, nothing of note on the bottles here. So that is what we are looking at. Now, one other thing I want to show you all, uh, the batch three here did just come with this little booklet. And this booklet shows you spectrum of the American to European casks used in a bunch of their whiskeys. You may not be able to read that. But what I'm going to tell you is, is that uh, cast strength release number two, a little bit closer in the middle, but leaning on the American oak side, cast strength number three, very far on the European oak side. Now, what is the difference between these? Generally speaking, American oak, which is pretty much ex-bourbon in almost all cases, unless it's virgin, uh, generally sweeter, whereas the, uh, you know, you get more of the caramel, the vanilla and stuff, whereas European oak tends to be a bit spicier, get a bit more wood notes generally, okay? So that is the tail of the tape here on the Highland Park uh, cast strength editions number two and three, I should mention, I have a review of number one, which I'll throw up right here if you want to take a look at it before we begin. Um, that one was the furthest on the American Oak scale. Okay, so that alarm means it's time to taste whiskey. This is the color of batch two. This is the color of batch three. You see any difference? Eh, not so much. So starting with batch two on the notes. Sherry. This one was known to be a bit more sherry forward, and it's pretty clear why, because there's a lot more of it coming off the nose. <sighs> Spicy, mm, sweet, dry red fruit, more of a charred oak note, a bit of that heather honey peat in the background, sweet, sweeter version of peat, very classic Highland Park. Little prickly on the nose, smells a little bit youthful. Okay, let's give it a taste. 
Mm. Heavy, full mouthfeel, spicy, hot. Okay, so here's what's going on here. It arrives rich, a lot of viscosity, heavy vanilla notes, dried red fruits, honey, a bit of toffee in there, a little earthiness. This is very sweet spice, sweet savory kind of thing going on here. As it develops, heat comes in. It's potent. This thing definitely gives you a nice hug. Medium finish. Chocolatey, malted milk ball, vanilla bean. Some of those nice sweeter fruits now on the back end. Maybe a little bit of pear, a little bit of apple. That's number two. <laughs> Let's check out cast strength number three, 63.9%. I'm sorry, 64.1. Hmm. This one is definitely woodier and spicier. No surprise considering the apparently a higher use of, of European oak. Again, heavy sherry notes, even heavier sherry notes on this one. It's a much more dried red fruit, just dominates the nose. Some of those undertones of maybe a little bit of burnt sugar. Let me just double check and make sure that this is the right. Yep, 64.1. Honey. A little bit floral. Heat. This one's a little peatier, actually, I'd say. Okay, let's give it a taste. Highland Park cast rank number three. Mm -hmm. Rich. Oh, the sherry on this is much heavier. This is almost closer to like a sherry bomb. Heavy red fruits. Juicy apple, a little bit of floral. Peat kicks in as the bourbon cask American oak starts to show itself a little bit, where you get a nice undercurrent of vanilla caramel. A bit drier finish, spicier, fresh cut wood, less charred oak, more fresh oak. Medium to medium long finish, really nice dark chocolate note. Citric honey. So all in all, sweet, spicy, savory as well. Wow, this finish is actually hanging out for quite a bit of time. Impressive. Okay. We are going to put some water on these, and then I will take them in reverse order. These are cast strength. I'm going to do six drops of water on each. I really want to bring these down a bit and see if we can get past some of the heat and the spice. I found that batch two is a bit, bit hotter even though it's a little bit less ABV. <laughs> Going back to batch three. This is just very classic Highland Park. A bit of that bready note, the honey, the, the, the slightly musty, mustiness of like a Dunnage warehouse, an old basement where, you know, cardboard in the ba old basement. got a dustiness to it. Sherry notes are still there. They're even a bit more full, less dry. So water's opening this up a bit. Mm. There we go. Still has some spice and some kick from the peat. It has brought the heat down. Sweet. It's much sweeter now. Sweet, sour, sweet, spicy. Sherry notes, red fruit, dark red fruit, dry red fruit, cinnamon stick. On the spicy side, also got, you know, hints of um, fresh cut wood. It's even a little bit of like a, what is that? Ginger. And maybe even some like anise. Medium long finish, chocolate, rich, 
dark chocolate. It's pepper. Mm. Okay. Back on over here to batch number two. Ooh, very different with water. Much more toffee, Werther's candies, confectionery notes, vanilla icing, much, much more bourbon notes on this with water. These are much, much more different with water. Still getting some hints of the sherry, yes. It seems to be mixed, uh, married together pretty well. Gosh, it's like fresh baked sweet pastries. Here we go. Mm. Mm. This one's still a bit hot. Heavy, much more caramel darker notes, dark barrel char notes. Getting some of that ginger here. Sweet, sweet spice savory, same thing. Uh, but just on the other side, much more creamy bourbon notes than the drier sherry notes on the other one. Finish is medium, not quite as long as third. Getting a little bit of grape, honey. And uh, it's almost like orange marmalade a little bit. Okay, so there we go. Um, let's talk value on these. These Highland Park releases here in the United States, around $90 average. Cast strength, great. Non-chill filtered, great. NAS, not so great. Color, we don't know. Probably natural, but doesn't say. Um, they are not necessarily exclusive releases. These should be pretty widely available, but they don't last around forever. Right now, you can get Batch 2 and Batch 3 pretty easily, with Batch 3 just coming on the market here in mid-September 2022. Um, compared to some of their age statement stuff at much lower ABVs, does this whiskey, either of these, you know, reach the just overall everyday balance and harmony of the 12? Tough to say. Uh, they definitely give you a full-on punch in the face of Highland Park flavor. So, you know, I think we're going to just, for a cast drink whiskey these days, you know, from Highland Park, maybe it's a tad overpriced. You'd like to see these more around like 70. We're going to go, we'll stick with a medium value, but it's leaning towards a medium low. All right. Now let's get into what is the final verdict here on these here and final thoughts. Okay. So first of all, Highland Park is a distillery that, um, well, I love some of their classic lineup. I have not been too impressed with it, what they've been doing of late. Tons of non-age statement releases. What I kind of view as sort of gimmicky names. You, you know, there's so many of them, you can't really even uh, try to taste them all if you wanted to. And they're not of always the greatest quality. Um, so my Highland Park uh, interest has waned a bit over the years. That said, these castings caught my eye. And while the first one, which I linked earlier, um, I did not really like, I do enjoy the progression that I'm seeing here. Um, these batch two and batch three really couldn't be more different. These, uh, I think two and one were much more alike than these two are. If you are looking for a much more full on sherry experience, this number three really hits the nail on the head for that. While batch two seems to be a bit more in the middle, but the bourbon notes as we saw in water came out a lot more. Um, I think these are both going in the right direction. I would love to just see them put it in age statement on these at some point in time. A 10-year casting, they could go a really long way. Um, they're hot. They're a bit expensive. You're definitely going to need water to get the most out of these. But all in all, I think these are both really pretty solid releases. And I'm actually quite excited to be saying that about something from Highland Park these days. Um, as for the one that I think is the winner, I'll be honest, I think this ba the batch three is, is the winner here. I think it's just captures more of that Highland Park quality. It has a bit longer finish and it has that, um, well, unmistakable Highland Park. It just, that sh the sherry notes on this really elevate this and make it a bit more complex and interesting. Uh, I'm gonna sit at a very, very respectable 3.75 out of five on the Highland Park cast strength release number three. So 
you know, that is a, a pretty respectable score for this whiskey, even at that price. As for the number two, I, I do enjoy it better than one, but not like a ton more. Um, I think I'm going to leave this one sitting right around that 3.25 range. So a little bit lower. I think it's just a little more generic. It's still a little hot. I think they're really hitting their stride with three. We're going to be pretty excited to see what comes out of four. Uh, the fourth release. Didn't plan on, honestly, uh, purchasing any of these again, but um, this batch three has caught my eye. So Highland Park Cast Strength Edition batch number three is the winner here with a 3.75 out of five respectable score. And 3.25 for the batch two, again, quite good, both above average. Uh, but, you know, I think if you have a choice based on the notes I shared, uh, batch three is gonna is gonna definitely do it for you. So leave a comment. Let me know. Have you had any of these before? Which ones do you like, dislike? Do you what are your favorite Highland Park whiskeys? I'd love to hear it. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of these drams. Uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up, and I'll catch you next time here on Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews. Here's your Malt Muser. It's the launch.